Uh, thank you for joining us here this afternoon. Uh, I wanted to announce today that I have taken uh, action uh, to enable a more comprehensive response to the current eruption uh, situation uh, at, uh, in the East Rift Zone on uh, Hawaii Island. Um, I have uh, directed um, the mayor, Mayor Harry Kim, and the director of Hawaii Emergency Management uh, to lead a team uh, to plan and take action to mitigate the risk posed by the Puna Geothermal Facility on Hawaii Island. Uh, I do believe that uh, this is very important. Uh, as I attended the community meeting uh, the other night, uh, clearly that was the biggest concern uh, expressed by the residents there, um, the Puna Geothermal Facility. I would like to emphasize that the facility today is safe. Uh, as part of our emergency um, procedures, the facility has been shut down um, and uh, we are monitoring its uh, activity. Uh, but we want to be certain that we have the authority uh, to act decisively if necessary. Um, we will be uh, reviewing uh, the existing actions already taken by Puna Geothermal Ventures. Uh, the two concerns that we are um, planning for and working to mitigate uh, is that there is a solvent, um, a flammable solvent that is used in the production of electricity at the plant, pentane. Uh, and we want to make sure that we can uh, remove it from the site as quickly as possible. Uh, and then the second concern uh, is the geothermal wells themselves, uh, making sure that we can uh, protect the, the public uh, and prevent a blowout of any of the geothermal wells uh, on the facility. Um, I have issued a supplemental um, proclamation uh, to enable this to take place. You know, we will be working uh, with uh, Mayor Kim and uh, Tom Travis to lead this team. It would include uh, experts from the Department of Health, Department of Land and Natural Resources. Uh, we also are uh, reaching out to um, national experts if necessary. Um, to mitigate the impact uh, that the facility would um, pose. Uh, once again, I would like to emphasize that um, the facility is stable. It is shut down. There is no immediate danger to the community. We are being proactive. We want to ensure that we uh, can take the actions necessary to remove the, the hazardous materials from the site, and then most importantly, uh, to be prepared to prevent uh, a blowout of the wellhead. Um, I also would like to announce that I just signed a request to President Trump uh, for declaration of a presidential disaster uh, for Hawaii County as part of uh, this uh, eruption uh, and the activities on the east um, rift zone on Hawaii Island. Um, we believe that we will exceed the threshold and we are working to um, seek the disaster uh, declaration uh, to ensure that we have access to federal, state, and county resources uh, should we need that as the, as the event progresses. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to take uh, any questions. Governor, yes. Um, have, have the, has PTV been up front because you, you heard it and I was out there we heard it you know that the, the residents are really concerned and feel like they're not being told and advised properly about the dangers and the risks I mean do you feel that PGV is being up front with everybody about these risks? I think most importantly this action is to include PGV as part of this team you know we uh, want we do know that uh, that their involvement in any action taken will be very important I believe that uh, taking this action and putting uh, Tom Travis and Mayor Kim, Harry Kim, uh, to lead the task force would assure the public. 
that uh, we are looking at all the uh, alternatives. We are examining and evaluating the risks to the community. Uh, and then most importantly, we will take uh, the appropriate action. Governor, a 15 fissure opened up pretty close to Puna Geothermal. How soon do you, can you get, you know, allow these risks or the stuff that you're well, taking? I do think, and you know, I was on the Big Island um, uh, all of yesterday, uh, and certainly being on the ground there, being able to speak with uh, Mayor Kim and Tom Travis, I traveled out to Leilani uh, Estate Subdivision, uh, was able to tour around some of the existing fissures, uh, and certainly that brought me to the conclusion that we needed to take decisive action, uh, that I wanted to be certain that we uh, had a quality team in charge that would be able to evaluate the risks uh, and uh, mitigating actions independently uh, to determine what would be the most appropriate action. And as, it, and as I said, we intend to include um, personnel from Puna Geothermal as part of this team. So Governor, the pentane is, is ready to move. How do you prevent a blowout of the wells? I understand moving the plant pentane, but what about the wells? How do you secure those? Well, I mean, I do think, and, uh, and PGV does have uh, an emergency plan. You know, we are evaluating what that plan is. Uh, again, we also uh, will be reaching out to seek uh, external national experts in uh, geothermal facilities uh, so that we can get uh, an unbiased uh, evaluation of what the potential mitigation actions could be. Can you share? No, right now, the, um, the focus is really to get this team together. They've actually already uh, been working since this morning. We discussed this yesterday. Uh, and certainly, they've um, initiated a number of meetings. And we've been looking uh, at identifying uh, national experts that we would uh, be able to include in the conversation. Um, you know, we, I don't have the specific um, emergency plan for PGV, but I do know that Harry and um, Tom have it, and they've been uh, looking at it and um, deciding what would be the appropriate actions, what the alternatives to mitigate the risk would be, and then what would be the recommended action. As you said, um, uh, the, the vents and the activity uh, is unpredictable in the area. The 15th vent opened. Um, I was on island when the 13th and 12th and uh, 14th had opened. And clearly, we went from a period where we thought that um, there, there actually was a pause in activity uh, to the 13th, 14th, uh, vent 15th opening in relatively short order. I think that that's why I believe it's imperative that we take this action. Um, as I said, the, the team is already working as we speak uh, to identify uh, experts and what the different strategies might be to ensure the safety of that facility. When you're talking strategies, I know you can't get into specifics because they haven't been determined yet, but are we talking about something internally that they'll do separately to the wells, or are we talking about some diversion that they might try to do with the lava? No, I think that we've uh, concluded that it's impossible to divert the lava, right? I mean, that's something um, Pele and Mother Nature will act. Um, and we have to be prepared. I think what we're looking for is we don't know what the timeline is. Uh, as you have noted, the fissures have been uh, opening up along that track. And if you project uh, the track of uh, uh, the line of where the fissures are occurring, uh, it definitely, um, the PGV facility is on that line. So we definitely want to be prepared. We want to uh, mitigate the risk of the penting um, fluid there as soon as possible um, because that clearly uh, is something that if, uh, if we move it off-site, uh, we can take action proactively. The issue with uh, the wellheads are, are different because we can't move those. How far is the facility from the nearest fissure? Um, I would guess it's a couple hundred yards. There's, we do have a map here. We can... We can um, kind of talk through that. I, uh, I don't know exactly where the wellheads are, but you know that whole facility is um, a number of uh, wells that are 
uh, driven into the ground, and they're in different locations uh, on the site. Governor, it's been a week now since this has all started last Wednesday, and do you think maybe they should have moved a little bit faster when it came to this PGV and some type of action plan? I mean, the, the residents were complaining about it to us when we got out there Friday, and uh, uh, maybe some kind of plan to move it sooner? Certainly, we had uh, had that discussion with PGV, and we asked them to uh, act as quickly as possible. The reason that I took this action is because we were not satisfied that they were acting quickly enough. So, so do you think they, they were act, acting reckless or irresponsible? No, I don't think that they were acting reckless or irresponsible. You know, as you, I think the challenge with uh, an eruption and a volcanic uh, activity is that it is unpredictable. Uh, you know, although the, uh, a number of the early fissures and vents uh, were close to the um, PGV facility, uh, the subsequent ones uh, started to move away from the facility. Uh, and so certainly I thought they might have thought that it wasn't uh, as urgent a need. You know, we always felt that it was uh, an urgent need. We had requested that they move it, uh, remove the fuel as soon as possible. Um, and uh, we, on, well, Tuesday or Thursday and Friday of last week, we had already identified that as an issue and had made a request that they move it off-site as soon as possible. And what was the reaction you got when you requested that right away? They said they would uh, get on it, uh, and it's still on the site, and that's why I'm taking this action today. So this action allows you, I guess, to force them or to move it along faster with Harry Kim there? And right, so uh, this does, uh, the supplemental... Um, um, proclamation that I have issued um, does allow me uh, to uh, take action uh, regarding private facilities um, uh, much quicker. Uh, clearly, we would want to work with PGV, and they will be part of this team. Uh, but we want to be certain that we have the authority to take whatever action is required to mitigate the risk to the community. When you talk about the risk, I mean, what is the worst case scenario here? Just because. A lot of us don't deal with this kind of this kind of thing. I mean, is it is it the well blowing? Is it the pentane? You know, what is what is the worst? Risk? I think it's I think it's that's the two critical risks: the pentane on site uh, and the lava, or uh, you know, a fissure opening up in the facility in the wellhead um, where the fuel is stored would you know clearly. Uh, ignite the pentane on site. I believe there's 50,000 gallons or so, and and that would be a very very hazardous uh, situation. And again, the wellhead blowing out um, would be. I, I think we are working through all of those um, scenarios, uh, and we'll be examining uh, the best alternatives to assure uh, the health and safety of our community. So, Puno Geothermal, have they estimated? like a, a blast radius if either the pentane or the wellhead blew, blows? Well, they, they, uh, in their emergency plan, they have uh, various uh, scenarios, and, uh, and they are looking at different things. You know, I think it's premature to talk about that at this point in time. As I said, um, Tom Travis and uh, Harry Kim, and I think we, we are fortunate to have uh, two very, very uh, qualified people uh, on on premise and able to step up immediately, familiar with the situation, and I think most importantly, uh, having the leadership and courage to take the action necessary to mitigate the risk. And just for clarification, so is it is the state or is the county going to be moving that pentane, or is it? We are working with PGV to move the pentane. If they are not quick enough, then we could. This uh, proclamation allows me the authority. Uh, to move it ourselves. You know, we'll be working uh, with PGV, and uh, my understanding is that they've accelerated the removal. We do expect that it would be off-site um, by the end of tomorrow, so. Did they say why it's taking uh, No, you might want to ask them that directly. Uh, just a quick question. On the, uh, you mentioned here uh, the money that's uh, set aside for this, uh, the cost uh, involved uh, expected cost, so about $3 million for 30 days. Uh, but it also says uh, if large-scale air and sea evacuations become necessary, that cost would go up. 
are we ready? Are we prepared for large-scale sea and air evacuation? No, I think then that's the purpose of issuing this proclamation at this time. You know, I uh, also uh, am preparing uh, to elevate uh, General Ken Hara as a dual-status uh, commander. Uh, General Logan has been working uh, so that we can um, get access to other uh, federal assets that are here in the island, uh, should that become necessary. You know, I think part of, um, and when you look at the geography of the island, uh, the challenge is that uh, these fissures are opening on key arteries and highways. And clearly, if we lost two of those, uh, then the, a, a large number of those in our community would be uh, isolated and we would have to um, find some other way of uh, moving those uh, individuals. You know, just, just like in the Hanalei situation, Wainiha and Hyena, with the uh, landslides that occurred uh, on Kuhil Highway, uh, clearly um, the highway was impassable and we had to use helicopters and other means to get in food, water, uh, and other provisions for that community. Uh, so we've begun uh, the planning process uh, to go through, you know, we are evaluating and preparing for all the alternatives. Uh, we are preparing alternatives for uh, temporary roads and highways should uh, Highway 130 or 132 uh, become impassable. And, you know, we've identified uh, farm roads and other roads that might be suitable um, for a temporary bypass or uh, to allow uh, facilities. Uh, so the team's challenge and what I challenge uh, Tom and Harry to do is really look at all of those alternatives uh, and begin to prepare plans uh, so that uh, should an event occur and we have to do mass evacuation or others, we will um, have clear guidance about what would be the best alternative and how to proceed forward. You know, I think it's uh, a, a couple of uh, different things uh, that we are concerned with. Clearly, the pentane uh, is one, and we are evaluated. Um, there, there has been discussions or estimates uh, that uh, should uh, all of the pentane on site uh, explode, that the blast radius might be as, as, um, as much as a mile, right, which would be significant impact on the community. Uh, you know, the wellhead... Um, uh, being destroyed or damaged is uh, is an even bigger impact. Um, you know, these uh, wells are, are um, drilled very deep, uh, and clearly having an open wellhead um, directly into um, the volcano essentially would uh, release a lot of uh, sulfuric uh, dioxide and other um, hazardous materials into the air. Uh, and we, it would be released until we could take action to close, close the wellhead. So, you know, we are definitely working. As I said, I want to emphasize that there is no immediate uh, danger on these facilities that we took action to shut down um, Puna Geothermal. We are being proactive to ensure that we uh, have clear command to be able to take action when necessary and then most importantly, creating an independent team of experts that can uh, look at the risks involved, find the alternatives that, uh, to mitigate that risk, and then be authorized to implement them. In the meantime, while this facility is shut down, does this have any impact on the Big Island's power supply? Uh, we have had discussions with HELCO, and they are actually uh, in the Emergency Operations Center every day. Uh, and they, um, they've informed us that they can continue to operate the rest of the network uh, based on the generating facilities that they have available. Everybody all good? One question. The sure. presidential disaster declaration, you mentioned the threshold. Yes. Um, that we, we believe will exceed it. What is that threshold? It's um, $1.9 million, and as is... As you see in our application, we, uh, we do anticipate for the next month that the cost, uh, direct cost involved would be just under $3 million. Uh, we actually, because we reached out to FEMA last Thursday, um, we have um, 
significant crew of uh, people here from FEMA. We have uh, 15 professionals uh, in the state of Hawaii. Uh, five of them are on Hawaii Island supporting the e emergency operations team in the EOC. Uh, we have another 10 people here uh, at um, the Hawaii Emergency uh, Management uh, Center here on Oahu. Uh, they have been very uh, involved and very helpful in helping us work through uh, the disaster declaration request and uh, organizing uh, the data that we needed uh, to make the request. Just within this last month, Kauai saw historic flooding, personal damage, personal loss. Now the Big Island, personal loss. What is your message to these affected residents? You know, I just want them to know that um, the state, county, and federal government is uh, committed to uh, keep our communities safe and healthy first and foremost. And uh, the warning points and all of the systems involved are really focused on helping us do that. Uh, and then uh, through emergency proclamations, we, the counties uh, and state government has acted quickly to ensure that we could initiate actions required uh, to um, mitigate risk, to repair uh, critical facilities, uh, and then most importantly, to try to uh, return to normal as quickly as possible. You know, we will continue to look at uh, what those actions are. Um, state and county actions have led ahead of um, the emergent uh, federal uh, declarations because we do know that it's important um, from the state and county level that we take immediate action uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, and then we do um, lean forward with our federal partners uh, because they can bring um, a larger array of assets to help uh, state and counties respond. You know, for example, if in that scenario, if we had to do mass air evacuations, uh, we don't have the helicopters or equipment that we would need uh, to execute that. But clearly, uh, we would reach out for PACOM uh, to get um, access to other uh, Department of Defense um, helicopters and other equipment that would help us. All set? Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.